Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51 Percent, a show about women reshaping our world. Coming up, how the sisterhood gets left behind when Chinese women discover their husbands are cheating on them. Also, fashion forward, we meet the woman who's determined to get the world of fashion to move in an environmentally sustainable direction. And the young singer who captured the hearts of many in Afghanistan by becoming the first woman ever to reach the final of Afghan Star. But we begin in China where when a woman finds out her husband is cheating on her, she takes matters into her own hands, but not in the way you might expect. To save their marriages, many Chinese women are now enlisting the help of so-called mistress hunters, whose job is to take down the other woman. Unka Ula has more. In Shanghai, when a woman's husband is cheating on her, she'll often turn to Ming Li. Welcome to the largest mistress dispelling agency. Divorce in China is still taboo, and many women face destitution if they leave their husbands, who often support them financially. The blame, then, falls on the mistress. Ming Li dedicates her life to tracking down mistresses and convincing them to break off their affairs. It all starts with a consultation. Li is helping a woman in her 40s whose husband is cheating on her. She asked not to be identified. My first instinct was to file for divorce. But then I thought about it, talked to friends, and decided to save my marriage. How can I help you? I'd like you to break up my husband and his mistress. To get her wish, the woman needs to be prepared to pay the price. The entire operation can cost tens of thousands of dollars. Then Lee's team gets to work. The agency employs 300 agents across the country, anti-divorce investigators who are ready to go to far lengths to save their client's marriage. Yu is one of the most experienced mistress hunters. He's been doing this for five years. He's one of our best experts. He's even willing to sacrifice himself so the mistress develops feelings for him instead of her married lover. The idea is to create a new identity to lure the mistresses. We find excuses to call them or to pretend we accidentally run into them. The point is we need to build a relationship with them. That relationship can vary from full-on seduction to posing as a confidant who convinces the mistress to break up with her lover. Part of their strategy is also to rent out apartments near the mistresses. This Shanghai apartment is just below the apartment of a woman they are tracking. Each time the woman leaves the building, we can see her from here. It's great. The investigators learn that the mistress likes animals, so they got a dog to help start conversation. They have two strategies to deter her. Either we hire a handsome actor, more handsome than our client's husband, who can seduce the mistress, or we make it worth her while to move to a different city by finding her a good job. But while Lee's strategies sometimes border on camp, other agencies take a more aggressive approach. Some publicly humiliate mistresses or beat them until they agree to break up with their lovers. For Lee, it takes about six months on average to close a case. But those who are patient reap the rewards. The agency has a 90 percent success rate. Now, it's the second worst industry when it comes to pollution. It also has an appalling reputation when it comes to fair work practices. I'm talking about the business of fashion, which is worth some $3 trillion a year. But one woman is determined to change things. Christina Dean is the founder of Redress, a Hong Kong-based NGO that seeks to promote environmental sustainability in the fashion world, and she joins me now from London. Christina, thank you so much for being with us. I just want to ask you, what made you set up Redress? When I started Redress 10 years ago, China had 16 out of the world's top 20 most air polluted cities. And more recently, China's pollution map has absolutely hit through the roof. 61% of China's groundwater is now classified as unfit for human touch and 20% of their soil is too contaminated to grow crops. We have 450 cancer villages in China as a result of the manufacturing boom that's basically helped the GDP but it's also seriously damaging people's health there. Now, you said buying a dress is like eating a Big Mac, and you've just outlined there what happens in China. But what impact is it having across the globe? Just a couple of years ago, 
we were producing 100 billion new garments a year, which was double from the year 2000. Now, what's actually happened is that because consumers are buying so much, because the price point has come down so much, we are wasting more and more clothes. And ultimately, we're putting more and more pressure on the environment, which is having dire social and environmental impact, not just in China, which is the famous garment manufacturer of the world, but increasingly in other countries in Asia. What's happened over the last few years is that as China's minimum wage has increased, and so too have the costs of production in China, much of the fashion industry at the cheaper end and much of the sort of garment cutting stage has moved out to other countries in Asia. And many of those countries have got some of the most corrupt governments in the whole world. And many companies are being able to benefit from that by being able to create clothes at a very low price point in, by benefiting from low workers' pay. Now, given its massive contribution to global pollution, is the fashion industry actually listening to what you're saying, Christina? Well, the fashion industry is absolutely acutely aware of its position on pollution. Um, you know, there is no fashion professional out there with a pulse that is not worried about this. You can't deny it. You know, you can't, the fashion industry cannot continue to consume the resources and generate the amount of pollution that it's doing. This is a business risk that's going on out there. We have a global population that's increasing. We have more and more people coming on the planet who need food. They need, they need fibres as well. There is more and more competition for land and food will beat fibres. The fashion industry knows that it's in for a very long haul struggle when it comes to sustainability. And so, yes, fashion industry is taking this very, very seriously. As women, are we more likely to be aware of the impact of pollution and more proactive when it comes to defending the environment? Of all apparel production and consumption, it's estimated that 70% of the market is bought by women for women's wear. However, as we know with women, we have much more power than what we directly buy because we also influence the family's consumption and buying. So 80% of all consumption is actually uh, influenced by the woman. And I'm so happy about that. I believe that women want to empower the, the world to be a better place. And I think that if we can do that through how we shop, I know we can change the fashion industry. Christina, you're just about to release a book called Dress With Sense, which is going to give people tips on how to effectively buy less. So what, in fact, can we do? As consumers, we need to get a handle on what we are buying, how we, would, how we are taking care of our clothes in this case and how we are discarding our possessions. We've got into a very ugly cycle of overconsumption, uh, misuse and early disposal. Christina, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To Afghanistan now, where Zulala Hashemi has become the first woman to reach the final of the TV talent show Afghan Star, still despite the program's immense popularity it comes under constant fire from religious leaders for showing unveiled women singing and dancing. 18-year-old Hashemi may not have won in the end, but making it to the final was an achievement in itself, as Ellen Gainsford reports. Fighting for victory in a male-dominated competition. 18-year-old Zulala is the first woman in 12 years to make it to the final of Afghan Star the local version of the talent show American Idol. It's an impressive accomplishment, even more so because she comes from the ultra-conservative Nangarhar province, home to followers of the Islamic State group and the Taliban. <laughs> Zilala is the only singer in a family of politicians, but was lucky enough to be encouraged by her mother. Initially, when I took part in the show, I was very scared. But later, when I saw the support I received from the people, I forgot the fear and thought, I can do it. In the jury, Zulala has someone to look up to. Ariana Saeed is an Afghan pop star. She fled the civil war to settle in London. Through her songs, Ariana campaigns for women's rights in Afghanistan, where they're often victims of violence and abuse. Throughout the competition, she didn't hide her support for Zulala. Zulala coming to the finals means that people have started supporting women and people are opening up their minds towards the female singers and they're accepting female singers, which, uh, which is amazing. And I'm just, I'm so happy. When Afghanistan started in 2005, 
only four years after the fall of the Taliban. It faced criticism from conservative mullahs. But the show went ahead anyway and used to be held openly with hundreds of people in the audience. But last year, the host network, Tolo TV, was attacked by the Taliban. Since then, the show was held in a compound, under tight security and with limited guests. We, as Tolo TV, always try to, to help people, to develop, to help people raise their voices and to help people entertain, because we are the only entertainment source in this country. Under the spotlight, change is underway. From just a couple of female contestants in the first few seasons, this edition saw more than 20 women enter. If luck and voters are on Zalala's side, she may become the first girl to make it to the top. And that's it for now. And if you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page. That's France 24.51% or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far. And please do keep those comments coming in. So until our next show, bye for now.